The first days of the Institute's life uh, do still have, a, I have vivid memories of those. We were setting up a new program plus a new focus, a new substantive focus. Uh, we were trying to have the most comprehensive understanding ever of the causes of political violence and war and the causes of peace or what is really essential to make peace building work in order to sustain peace, not just five years, but for a long time. There was Father Hesburgh's vision, which was to bring young people together from especially the nuclear powers that were at that time in strong uh, rivalry in an, uh, a nuclear arms buildup. And he knew that nuclear war would be an absolute disaster and wanted to try to defuse the rivalry. So this meant bringing students from the Soviet Union, which was not easy at those, uh, in those years, and from China and from the United States. Those three countries were the main nuclear rivals at that time, bringing them together to study together and to see if they could figure out how to defuse the nuclear arms competition. And the second part was Mrs. Crocks. Uh, Mrs. Croc was interested especially in helping young people work at trying to reduce violence and war throughout the world. She had a vision of peace and of helping those who might build it. The third component George and I, George Lopez and I brought, which was the growing, beginning but growing field of peace research and peace studies. My hope for the Kroc Institute over the next 35 years is that it continue to blossom forth in directions that already have been established and also that it remains very open-minded to new directions that might be suggested by a very careful look at the empirical realities that the world faces and trying to relate those to the long-standing, time-honored wisdom that we find in the major ethical, religious, and philosophical traditions that focus on human compassion and a compassion-centered approach to political and social problems.